Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now today we're going to have a look at adding figures into our landscapes with this little painting. Now that's not to be confused with painting the human form as your main subject. This is all about just how we can enhance our paintings and enhance our landscapes by just adding that little bit of human touch. Now, to be honest, when I started watercolour painting, oh, must be been all about from years ago, I'd never add figures into my paintings because I knew that there was no hiding place. If you muck those up, then you potentially mucked up your whole painting because the eye tends to be drawn to human figures. So you need to get those right. So what I used to do is just really practice simplifying the human form down into the most basic of shapes, especially when you're talking about figures which are in the distance. So I used to practice time and time again just getting these little figures right. I was also very fortunate to have a very good friend who's a life drawing tutor. So I often used to sit in in his classes and just study the human form. So come and join me and I'll take you through the process step by step. So using just a single colour, this is Payne's Grey, the trick is to simplify the figure into its most basic form. Just a simple blob for the head and a basic carrot shape for the body. And you can paint a whole page of these until you get it right. Next, just begin to put in a little more shape in each one as you progress. Start putting in the suggestion of some arms and just bend the legs in, which will give that impression of walking. Now I'm using a number 12 brush on these to try and stop too much detail. So here, perhaps a couple holding hands with a little dog, all very loose and sketchy. And I never even bother with feet, all unnecessary detail. Now you really can't practice these enough, so spend a whole day just painting these simple shapes and I promise you, you'll get better. Now, whenever I've done this in class, without exception, students always tend to paint the head far too big, even when I mention it first. And we end up with more of a cartoon character looking something more like Elmer Fudd than a real human. Now, there's approximately six to seven heads in one body, and getting the proportion right is everything. Okay, so now for the landscape. And here is the reference photo. Now this beautiful photo was kindly sent to me by Samantha. So many thanks. And I've just simplified it a little by cropping it in. Now I'm sure many of you will recognize it as Willie Lott's cottage, immortalized by appearing in several of Constable's paintings. Most famous, of course, being the Haywain. Now this painting has appeared on more calendars, jigsaw puzzles, placemats, than probably any other painting in the world other than obviously my own, cat with a sombrero number one. Anyway, let's make a start. Okay, for today's materials, my paper is some lovely Saunders Waterford Rough 300 pound, won't need stretching. Any decent watercolor paper will do. My colors, normal three primaries, Cabot Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow, then some Cadmium Orange, Yellow Ochre, Payne's Gray, cerulean blue and burnt umber and four brushes today three quarter inch flat number 12 round number six round and my trusty number three rigger so here's the drawing and i've added in three little figures including bruno the spaniel and as ever you can download the drawing free of charge from my website link in the description Okay, this first mix is a 50-50 cerulean blue and cobalt blue. And I'm half wetting the sky and putting in a simple blue wash, slightly lighter to the right. And then doing the same down into the river. And 
This is just a very watery wash of yellow ochre. Now I'm just adding a touch of burnt umber into the mix and putting in the front shadow side but still keeping it nice and light and transparent. And now just dropping in a dollop of burnt umber. Yeah and here we have a rather pleasant snow scene. I think we'll leave it here shall we? Okay moving on. Now this is a 50-50 mix of cobalt blue and cadmium yellow and I'm just using this as a light base wash to cover all the grass areas. So now for the trees, and I'm laying my brush flat, picking up the texture of the paper to give this nice dry brush effect. I'm also adding more cobalt blue and cadmium orange into my green mix to give the colours a little bit of variety. Now a really nice dark value here to create a high contrast with the cottage. So now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of Edmunds Broadside. Now I'm just giving a second layer or glaze in the bank area here. Now this roof colour is a mix of alizarin crimson and cadmium orange with just a touch of cobalt blue. And using my number six straight into the roof. And then dropping in wet in wet some dark green to give this moss effect. Here is just some burnt umber. The windows are just some watery panes grey and I'll come back to put in the detail later. Okay so now for a little masking fluid to paint in some reeds. Now I like to use an old brush for applying this because you can get brush strokes very similar to using paint. Now with my number three rigger and some burnt umber, a few branches and some details on the cottage.
and this is a quite a solid wash of Payne's Grey for the windows. Here, some burnt umber again. And then back with the green mix. Now with my number 12 again, I'm building up the bank details. And then dropping in random colours of dark greens, blues and oranges, all wet and wet into the foreground. Now we're going to do some splatting. Now I've been asked, how do I avoid spraying it everywhere? And the best thing I can say is target practice. Just draw a few circles and some scrap paper and try and get as much as you can inside. It always gives such a great random texture that you can never achieve this by painting it. And of course you can always dab out any dots which are too dark. And here again with my rigger I'm just painting in some more reeds. Next make sure everything is totally dry and use a flat brush and paint in clean water into the river area. Okay, so now tilt your board to about an angle of 45 degrees. Now I'm just placing a book under the front edge. About a war and peace thickness should do it. Now, while it's still wet, match the colours above and paint in these vertical stripes, making sure you leave some of the blue sky reflection between your washes. As you can see, the tilt of the board will help it run down. And here are just some darker values suggesting windows and trunks. So again, make sure this is totally dry and remove the masking fluid. Then with a pale watery green wash, put in a few shadows on the reeds. Now, I always love this bit. When dry, soften with a damp tissue a few of these hard edges. Now I've been asked, how wet should the kitchen roll be? 
Now, to be honest, I use a little bit of human DNA. Now, I could say spit, but I'm too polite for that. Okay, so now what this tutorial is all about, putting in those figures. No pressure, nice and relaxed, just keep it simple. Using your number six, you can use whatever colors you like. Now these look like country folk, so I'll give her a green wax jacket. Next for the little fisherman here. Now the property is owned by the National Trust and I've actually got no idea if fishing is allowed on the river. So I don't want hordes of you going down there with your rods saying Paul Clark said that we could fish here. So while he's drying we'll give these two a shadow to help ground them on the path. with a little Payne's Grey for some further details. Of course, you know me by now, I love to finish off with some pastel pencils. Now you can use gouache, but I just find these so instant. And this white one now comes included in my brush sets. Now with my Faber Castell, a brownish colour for this fence here. And then here I just want to get a touch of that creamy colour from the cottage reflected into the water. And these pastels are great because they're easy to soften and blend. And here is a yellowish green for a few more reeds. And then back to my brush. And I think as ever we're in danger of overworking it. Always keep it simple. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Don't forget to practice those little figures because adding them can really enhance your painting and help to tell little stories. So, take care everyone. Hope to see you all again next week. Please don't forget to do the normals. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Take care. Bye for now.